Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to episode 169. We made it. And I got the fine in this week. You did. I'm, I'm happy. Aren't you happy for me? I just feel good for them. That we, Our listeners, they sit on the edge of their seat for their weekly validation from Jason. And when you don't mm. give it to them, wow. they just... Thanks for stroking my ego that You're way. doing the me. Lord's work, and I just I don't want you I don't want you to be uh what what is it, bereft in your duty? Is that bereft. the wow. wow that's a word? Is that the is that the that's phrase? a great word, man. man. I, I don't know if it's correct. I said it <laughs> and it sounded right, and then when I said it, I go I also, So send that send that in as a as like a feedback what is I'm not sure bereft that was used in duty. That sound like, bereft I sounds like grieving. Oh, he's gonna look it up now. Yeah, I, I don't know. have to because right. it's gonna bother me. But you continue on. So your, in addition, I, I need to say before we go too okay, far. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Brad. Oh, good. <laughs> He's talking to you. All right. That was from last week for those of you who skipped last week. Oh, it does work. Yeah, it means to be lacking in something. Okay. So to be bereft in your duty. I so I did it. use it correctly. So okay. I am no good longer you. bereft. That's right. I feel non-bereftid. <laughs> you have you have been. You have would that be to be refted? No. Be refted? Be no. Be, be is not. It's just. It's one word. Oh, that is your your being of it. So you are now unrefted. <laughs> okay. Ask the question. Ref- <laughs> he is reftless in his move duty. on, please. So here's the question: Do, do you guys have uh, have some weird dreams from time to time? Always. I, you know, not much. No, I, if if them. I do, I don't remember them long enough to talk about them. Okay. Well, then you might not need to answer this question because this question is about our dreams. Here's the question. Are we going to be held accountable for our subconscious thoughts and the dreams that we have while we are sleeping? So I think what they're intimating is that the stuff that comes into our minds that we don't necessarily put there or control or the things that we dream about, is God really upset about that? And is are you, we going to stand up on Judgment Day I'm and assuming, God's going to be like, you know, that dream you had? Is that an issue? I'm assuming they mean the dreams are there's some kind of sinful quality to the dream. I'm assuming that. Like, that the, like, I mean, you that it would be some kind of sexual dream, dream or, or a vengeance. I've murdered I, someone. Do I get credit if I have a dream where I do great things? That's what I meant. Oh, assuming that's a big thing. I don't think they All think, I'm saying, I'm playing with their logic. The logic is I could be point. accountable on the negative side mm. if I have a dream where I do incredible stuff. Like, I finally can... You know, fix the messed up political system in hmm. our world. Well, could we? And, I'm and, thinking no. Well, but see, here's where I, I th- also think no. Right. Here's where I think we need to have because I think this question presupposes something. All right. Because this is why I asked the question, which I was leading to the thing you were talking about as well. Is I think there's this idea of because once again, when it says, "Are we going to be held accountable?" Mm-hmm. I assume they mean before God. Yep. And I assume they mean when my life is done. So mm-hmm. I'm assuming that what they're talking... I'm assuming they don't mean this like I, like I have want... a sexual dream and then I'm struck dead in that moment. Well, I, I don't think, think they want to know, is it sinning? Okay, yes, that's what I mean. Is yeah. I think the idea that people have about being held accountable mm-hmm. in the judgment seat of God is this idea of God is sitting there just listing out all the bad things I've ever done mm-hmm. because I don't think they do think the thing that he said, which is if I had a good... A good dream, I'd, I'd be getting a reward because being held accountable before God in most of our minds, yes. I should say most, but many of us who grew up with a certain idea of what the end times and what judgment before God would look like, it's a God's, God lists all the bad things I do. I'm really, I'm really embarrassed. And if I follow Jesus, he still lists out all the bad things. You did it. And then I go, but- I was gonna, I had a laser gun. Which really, really is hard on us. So many Hillsong songs. Where he's buried my sins in the deepest sea, and he remembers oh, yeah. them no more. Yeah. But he does have a list he's going to oh, pull out right. he is on ready. Judgment Day. Which he, is it? He, right. he buried it in the sea, drained the sea, found the list, held so it up. I, I thought it might be helpful if we had a conversation of <laughs> yes. what does what does that even mean, and then we might be able to get to this dreams question because mm. I think the logic of it will make more sense yeah. once I have an idea. It's so, not God. Ticky tacky, taking down all the bad things I've done. Yeah, I. But, I, th- I but does he, does this even fit into if you had that paradigm? Does this even fit into that paradigm? I don't think it does. I don't but either. I think I. But I think it's better a better use of our yeah. time to give them a correct paradigm. All right. Well, so I think it goes back to, and we've all taught it so many times now that 
uh, Mr. Tozier, who originally said it, we given him plenty of credit of most important thing mm -hmm. <laughs> about, you. The about you is what you think about when you think about God. Mm -hmm. And I, I almost always, when I sit and think, when I talk to people and I hear the things they're concerned about in their relationship with God, it almost always is because they have a wrong view, in my opinion, mm. uh, of the way God sees us or sees them. or the. In the end, it's the way they look at God. And if you can help them see, oh, so you're saying God's really petty. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, you see a God who not only can he not find enough things to condemn you for during the day, <laughs> he's got to take into account all the things you didn't even realize you were doing yes. while you were asleep because he dislikes you that much. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, and he's so full of wanting not to include you that he needs more. Now, I'm not saying this person ever conscious. I bet they don't think that. No, I don't. I bet that. on their conscious level, if I said, "Is that the kind of God you have? That yeah. there's a father who you've put him in a bind because you accepted Jesus, but he wants so much to make you accountable for all these things." You've, you've done that he's even counting the ones in your sleep. So if that's not the picture you have of God, then the answer is, of course, that's not what this answer is. He's yeah. not that kind of God. Yeah. He's not, I mean. But I do think, to, to, be, to be honest, the person, I, I agree with you. I don't think that's where this person's question would necessarily come from. Most people don't come from that. But at the same time, we are... Somewhere along the way, many of us through our upbringing are brought up on an image of God that does fit right into it that does. for some reason. And, 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 and I'm not saying it comes from you know a direct teaching about God. It's also the teachings that we teach people about themselves. Yeah. You know, and now that I'm, I'm immersed in the world of mental health, um, we got to talking about this one time. There, there, are, there are thoughts, and, and not, nobody talks about this hardly at all. But every single person, because it's absolutely normal, we have the, these vile thoughts mm -hmm. that come into our minds. There, there are things that I know, all, I will admit, I have thought in a moment about that would, it would shock anybody who knows me. Right. It's this fleeting thought of these really vile things. I mean, and not just sexual things, no. just violent things. That's and, right. and you just think, well, what would happen if this happened? Or what if would happen if I did this right, right. now? And, and as soon as you think it, your, your conscience goes, oh, my God, where did that come from? Yeah. And what, what I have learned is, is that's an absolute normal thing, and it is actually a part of you learning <laughs> what is a good and acceptable mm -hmm. thought versus what is not. It's your it's your brain playing out things to show you that ain't right. And it, it's a part of the process of learning. That's, That's the right. best way that I know how to say it. Um, so what I would say to a person like this is I guarantee you, you've thought of some specific things that you've thought you didn't intend to think about some people or that you thought about and possibly doing, or you woke up and had a dream about some things that you and your right mind would have never considered right. doing before. And I guarantee you, when you had that thought, you instantly went, oh, oh my goodness. That's right. Is that me? Mm -hmm. That right there tells you it ain't. Right. Well, and I think right. to go to go to what you're talking about here, I was thinking about uh, my mind mostly sits in the world. You, you were talking about psychology. My world often sits in the mind of philosophy. And I yeah. remember hearing a uh, Christian philosopher mm -hmm. once. I can't remember who. I always give it to Dallas Willard if I can't remember who. So go. it's probably Dallas Willard. But if not, that when Jesus talks about, for example, what you're kind of talking mm -hmm. about here of in when Jesus says it's not uh, if you commit adultery, mm -hmm. it's if you look upon a woman with lust. That's and what right. he talks about is he says, it's not if I've ever glanced at a woman and had a lustful thought. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus says it's if you look upon them, which means to look with the with, intent with lust. to lust. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm at the gym and I look across and I see a, a woman or see a part of a woman's body and feel a thing within my soul. It's the second look right. that when I look and I go, oh, I shouldn't, have, I should, she's not my wife, I shouldn't be looking that direction. It's the next time that I go, you know what, that was really good though. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's not that, oh, you're a bad man because 
Because that's where Jesus eventually gets to. If that was the point, you should just gouge out your eyes. Yeah. Right. If you just gouged out your eyes, you wouldn't have a problem. Or, or if you or chopped if you, off your hand, you wouldn't right. even be doing any of this stuff, which mm-hmm. isn't Jesus' point. Jesus no. is speaking hyperbolically mm-hmm. to say, it's not these subconscious things. It is your will that makes the choice to say, mm-hmm. because I've had this thought. And this, I do think, once again, this is more the philosophical part. It is where a lot of things have gotten wonky in our world, which is to say, we have a kind of philosophical belief that we say, if I ever desire something, that's what I am. Right. And if I don't act upon it, I've repressed myself. And we've really messed it up because what then is, and I would talk to teenagers and they would tell me often very explicit things that they would say, I had this, I feel horrible. I'm a terrible person. And I said, you know, everyone's had a thought like that. Right. I said, they have. And I tried to tell one of them, I said, I don't think anyone's ever maybe had that specific thought. <laughs> I said, but, I said, similar vile yes, and vulgar That's right. thoughts. Yeah. I said, the fact that you don't, like you said, the mm-hmm. fact that you don't want to do that, that's who you are. I said, mm-hmm. the fact that I am a, I, I find myself at times attracted to another woman does not mean I don't love my wife. Exactly. It's the choice I make mm-hmm. to say, nope, yep. that can't ever happen. Mm-hmm. That's who I really am. Right. My will mm-hmm. under the direction of, of my mind mm-hmm. and my body, all of those things. Yes. That's what Jesus means when he says, love the Lord your God mm-hmm. with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I think in this same vein, that's a lot of what is happening in the judgment seat of God. Is that God is looking over the course of our life and he says, uh, the most you decision you make is the decision you make about Jesus. Mm-hmm. I'm no longer counting up your sins. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out, are you a person who wants to be with Jesus and all the individual choices will all be somehow fit under that umbrella. And so the thought I have is just yesterday, as I was thinking when we were talking about this, about holding accountable and the way it works, you know, there was a way that I kind of thought before I became a parent that I was going to parent, which was uh, very much, you do this, here's the consequence, this is what's going to happen. And what I've learned that's way more effective, at least with my children, is one, there are consequences. The younger they are, there's a lot of consequences because the conversations don't help that much. But as they get older, just continuously going, you did this, so here's the consequence, doesn't ever help them get to the point. So yesterday, two of my girls here at church while we're eating lunch get in this fight. One of them hits the other one. The other one the whole time has just been being kind of rude and ugly, and the whole fight's just been a thing. So Normally, and as we're going home, everyone's going, well, what's the consequence going to be? What's this going to, someone needs, because it, it, one of them even said, this needs to be dealt with in the way, <laughs> this needs to be dealt with. And I said, we are going to deal with it. So we separate, we have our whole thing. I talk to each of them individually. What becomes clear to me in both of their individual things is neither one, neither the hit nor the other thing was that big of a deal. It's just normal sister things. What was the source of all the problems is both of them have a belief that the other one dislikes them at the core of their being. That every both of them think it of the other one. So I said, we need to sit down and have a conversation. So I get them both to sit down. And I said, I want you to hear what your older sister feels about you. And she outlined, I feel like I'm trying to help you all the time. And you're not taking any of my advice. And it makes me mad because you're starting all these fights. And Bob, so she goes through her whole thing. And it hurts me that you won't listen to me. The other one says, I think you just want to boss me around because you don't like me. And she says, well, I don't like you because you don't do what I say. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't do what you say because you don't like me. Mm-hmm. And, I, and so I stop them and I go, do you see how if you would just change your thought and realize my older sister loves me. And so maybe the reason she's telling me what to do is because she's older than me and she knows the way things. And I, maybe I should listen. And I said, and maybe when she doesn't listen, you should realize she's little and she struggles to go. And maybe if we both could have love at the, we both love each other and we both want to do it. Now, there are, there are 11 and 8, yeah, so that's right. going to go about as well. But the more conversation, yeah. my hope is the more I can lead that way. I think this is what God's going to do is he's, you know, we, we talked about those um, uh, near-death experiences mm-hmm. or whatever. And they talk about this thing of the life review mm-hmm. that happens. And once again, this is not necessarily like theologically sound. We don't know exactly. I think it's pretty theologically sound. 
I'm well, okay. I'm not saying I, I, what I'm what I'm saying is I, I just want to get that in for those of you. I, Ed, Ed thinks they're th theologically sound. I, I think would, this is the way it's going to happen. Okay. Well, I agree. <laughs> I agree that I just meant whatever. So anyway, the point of the life review uh, they get to in it is it was almost like we were watching it, and he was revealing to me the things that I couldn't see. The moment when I was hurt or the moment I hurt someone else, the way that that, and it was always moments I chose to love and the ways that those rewards went throughout that person's life or the moments I chose not to. I don't think it's God sitting down, putting a hammer on our head over and over again. You messed it up. Mm. Here's your consequence forever. Or it's, here's this thing. Here's your, here's your reward. And it's mm. thousands of mansions. Those are images to get us to, he's going to make us into beings of love because at one point we will be known mm. and we will know. And when we know love, you know, that, that base level attachment where I really do know I am loved and I can love. I think it changes things. Well, I, and, and I'll go back to what I was saying earlier about the picture of God. I think once you understand that that's what God is, the, the most fundamental picture of God mm. is God is love. Mm -hmm. God, we were made in love, to love, and to be loved. That's what human beings, we were made in love by the Trinity, to love the Trinity and each other. And that's our purpose in life. And one day we will do that per perfectly. But a part of that is going to be this thing. When you say accountable, that's exactly the way I see it now. Having been a dad and now a grandpa of, I absolutely look forward to the moment now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where I'm with my heavenly father and including all the stupid bad yes. and yeah. and bad things I've done mm -hmm. where he can explain to me mm. man I hate it when that happened don't you hate when that I did hate when that mm -hmm. happened and then he explains this is where it happened this is where you got off track this because I don't believe in eternity is going to be static I will have more chances afterwards and a lot longer after this life to live in rightness mm -hmm. in being the being that I am made to be with other people that this review is going to be a key part of it yes. and that that moment when he looks at the great moments of my life many of them which I won't have been aware of moments when I got it right Yes. That I wasn't even aware I got it right. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm just goofed up and my my picture of myself gets in the way of me seeing that I was doing good things. He'll go, man, that moment right there. I called all the angels at that moment and said, mm -hmm. look at that. Mm -hmm. And I'll get that moment that all of us want to have with our parents where they go, I was so proud. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I was proud of you. That's the way I see. But that's because my picture of God these days is that statement, God is love, I was made in love, to be loved and to love others, is the key to everything. So things I do unconsciously, if I'm accountable, it's just going to be God, oh, well, here's mm -hmm. what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know that mushroom and chili you had at night? Mm -hmm. That's what caused that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a chemical reaction in your body. Man, that was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> or something. You know, yeah. we'll have a little discussion. I, mean, I say, or it'll be, because that's what I think, too, is I think there's going to be moments that I will look at you know, and I think once again, because you're talking about the image that we have of God and the image that Jesus gives us of God is of a father. And I think about how, you know, me as a dad, and I'm sure both of you as dads, when you see your kid do something they're not supposed to do, and you know it's wrong, you know it's even harmful to other people, you see it. And, and you are upset. You're not mad at them. You're really mad for them. Mm -hmm. I'm mad because I know that's not who you are. Yeah. I know that's not who what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And I am maybe angry. You know, I am angry about what it is because I said, I said to my wife, Jennifer, said it's a weird thing when you have more than one kid to watch one of your kids be mean to another kid that you love. You get angry at the one who did the thing, but you still love them. They're still your kid. You're not angry like I am dis I'm despised with you. Right. It's, you, you hurt someone I love, and I don't want that to happen. You look at these mm -hmm. things, and, and I don't I, want to destroy you because you're no, my kid. that's right, no. that's right. And but then, but then a third party comes in. Mm -hmm. 
You know, one of the names for Satan is the accuser. Mm -hmm. And another adult walks in and goes, I saw your kid do this. Mm -hmm. And immediately you go, if you, yeah, but see, and you're not even saying, no, I'm not defending what they did, but you need to understand this about them. Here's how they've been hurt in the past, or this is where they're doing. And if you could see them the way I see them, you'd understand, yes, what they did is wrong, but they are still fully loved. Right. And I think that's going to happen a lot to us is where God's going to even reveal things to us that we didn't realize this pain in your life or this thing that you were lacking in your life, it's what caused you to go do even that harmful thing mm -hmm. to another person. But here I am and I'm making all things new and that's all getting wiped away because you're with me now fully. And I think it's just a different look. I think it is a beautiful look and then I don't have to be worried about subconscious thoughts and dreams or even, or even if I get up there and God goes by the way some of these subconscious thoughts it's going to be the same thing it's going because there have yes. been conscious things I've done I, I ain't got time to think about these yes. subconscious ones because I got enough conscious things I've done that, yes. that, that God could zap me for yes. I think if you're a follower of Jesus all of that accountability we are going to be accountable mm -hmm. I don't know I don't know about the subconscious thing I don't think so I but, don't think so either. but I, again, yeah. we're going to be accountable, but not in the way yeah. we've been cracked that it's going to be some terrible. I just don't see it that way. I just can't imagine it's going to be that way with a God who is. And I would imagine, knowing whoever asked us this question, you are sensitive to this. That's right. Obviously, mm. you are sensitive to this. And so I would imagine someone like that uh, would wake up from a dream and go, oh, my goodness. Right. That yeah. was awful. A person like that would then offer that to God and go, God, I don't want that. Yes, that's, right. that's good. That's God, right. would you take this from me? And 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 I and I know there's no condemnation in Jesus, and I know, but I still don't want this. I want you know, I want a pure mind. All right. And how's God going to turn that her way? That's right. That's I right. I just can't see it. So that's what I think when I think about the person I, who I must agree. have asked this. Question. I agree with that too. So I, I I was just recently working with someone who. Uh, struggles with a lot of this stuff of God's going to get me and every mm. little thought and and, he, and this person was just trying to and I and I just said just you got to you got to just sit and live with that with that verse there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus yep. and I said and in the moment you start walking under the cloud of condemnation I said you have walked away from Jesus yep. and I said so just slip right back into yeah, that just flow turn of the around. spirit just go in the other and and just fall, fall right back into that that stream of love that we know is the Spirit of God. And I said, and you'll be with him. I said, this other is the accuser. Yes. This, this that stream of thought is is the enemy. I said, and 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 they don't see they see it actually as diff the, the opposite. Yes, when I yeah. feel convicted, that's God. And I go, no, actually it's the other way around. Right. Mm -hmm. And again it goes back like Ed said, the picture of God that I have in my mind. Yeah, I think I think if if conviction leads you to want it to be different mm -hmm. and you take it to a God that's the Holy Spirit, the it Holy is. Spirit. But if conviction leads to condemnation, that's go. that's that's the difference. Yes. I think I was gosh, I can't get the words from Paul. I think it's Second Corinthians, where he talks about that difference that there is a, re, a repent. Sorrow. There's sorrow. a godly sorrow that mm -hmm. leads to repentance. Mm -hmm. That's a conviction of the Spirit. Yes. Ah, oh my goodness, I don't want to ever do that mm -hmm. again. And it leads me to want to change, but the problem, the tough part is with a subconscious thing, I can't change subconscious. That's right. No. So I'm, I then just have to say, God, I don't want this. That's can right. you, can mm -hmm. you help me with mm -hmm. it and help me figure out why I'm having subconscious or can I just let it go? Can you, yeah. can I trust that mm -hmm. you've got all of this? That's right. But, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and for all of you all that are now concerned that I don't think that anybody's held accountable, <laughs> we're all held accountable. It's just the account for followers of Christ is with a loving Father who wants us to get better yes. and helps us along the way. And if you don't have a relationship with the Heavenly Father, the account is, and the, I, I, can't, I don't know how to say this better. I, the way I say it these days, that in and of itself is, that is the account of you don't have a relationship with God. Yeah. And that's death unto itself. Mm -hmm. You don't realize at this point, but it is killing everything. And it is destroying everything, yes. and uh, none of us, none of us want that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Certainly not God. No. All right. Well, we got uh, like I said last week. Uh, before before we end, uh, we have a few spots open for some new questions. So uh, 
click on that link in the description with whether you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening in a podcast app, there's a link right there in the description. You can ask a question. And uh, as we sit here today, it might happen in the next couple of weeks. So uh, ask us what you need uh, and we'll answer it to the best of our ability. So next week, uh, we're going to talk about what did people do before Jesus came along? Were they saved? Were they not? How's that whole thing work? Ah. So we're going to get into that. See you. Have a great week.